Hi, I'm thinking about infidelity. I'm Michelle Wiener Davis and I want to tell you why I'm thinking about infidelity. For one thing, 95% of the people that I work with these days are experiencing infidelity. They're dealing with betrayal and affairs. So I've learned an enormous amount about how to help couples heal from it. I've learned so much that I have become determined and I'm in the throes of writing my eighth book and this one is going to be on helping couples heal from infidelity. But there's another reason that I've got it on my brain and that is that I'm doing a workshop in Boulder on May 13th through 15th, a three-day intensive, where I'm going to be teaching participants how to help couples save their marriages and keep their families together. And one of the primary topics that I'm going to be talking about is just this, people who have affairs and how to help them heal. I've been getting so many questions from people and I've been doing a lot of consultation with therapists who are working with couples who love their work but don't feel completely confident when it comes to walking couples down the path of healing from, for, from infidelity because certain issues pop up and they just don't know what to do. They need a road map. So I want to tell you what some of those issues are and certainly these will be issues addressed in the workshop. So for starters, what do you do when you're working with someone alone and then in that individual session they disclose the fact that they've been unfaithful. How do you handle that? What do you do when one person who's found out that his or her spouse has been unfaithful wants to talk about the affair a lot and perhaps is married to someone who doesn't want to talk about the affair very much at all because that person feels how can you heal if you keep picking at the scar? I mean how could, at the wound how can you heal? There's no way you can do that. What do you do with someone who um, is completely obsessed with thinking about the affair and can't think about anything else? What do you do with somebody who tells the truth but not the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So the truth about the affair leaks out over weeks or months which is really damaging and it's really um, re-traumatizing to the person who's been betrayed. What do you do for the spouse who's been uh, betrayed, who is accusatory and snoops a lot? How do you help the couple to identify what really needs to be worked on and repaired in the marriage so that their bond is strengthened? How do you rebuild trust? How do you guide them as to who in their lives they should talk to about what's happened? You know, sometimes when people talk to family members and well-meaning friends, their friends take sides and then become um, aligned against the marriage. What about telling the kids? Is that a good idea or not a good idea? What about the spouse who won't give up the affair? What about the spouse who will give up the affair but then is grieving the loss of that relationship? How do you handle both spouses when this is going on? How do you rebuild intimacy and passion and fun in the couple's lives? And finally, how do you affair-proof this marriage to make it much less likely that this will ever happen again? These are all topics that I'll be talking about in the workshop on May 13th through 15th, plus more. Plus I have incredible videotapes to illustrate each of the questions that I just asked offering solutions. I know that you love your work with couples, but if you feel less than 100% confident that you do have a very concrete roadmap to helping them heal from infidelity, you'll want to be there to learn what it is that I've been learning working with couples for the past three decades. So why don't you join us? It's